Mr. Secretary, let me uh, start off uh, by uh, applauding the administration's decision, at least at this point, to cancel lease sale, uh, Virginia lease sale 220. Uh, I opposed it from the very beginning. It, it puts the New Jersey shore directly at risk. And, you know, that risk, I think, is more palpable today, as we've tried to make the case for some time, that oil cannot be contained in neat little boxes in the ocean. Uh, it's certainly not being contained in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, and now that we are entering hurricane season, you know, even the natural loop current and where the projections of uh, the trajectory of that oil is, is subject to Mother Nature. Uh, and if you have hurricane season and the hurricane hits the Gulf, the consequences of where that oil goes for those of us on the East Coast is increasingly a concern. So I, I think it was smart at this point. I appreciate the administration's decision to support moving towards unlimited liability uh, as it relates to the responsibility of oil companies. It seems to me that if you take uh, and create unlimited consequences, that you should have unlimited liability. I think it's an opportunity for oil companies to also have discipline, knowing that if that is their liability obligations, that they will discipline themselves not to take shortcuts or uh, to uh, cut corners, uh, as some have suggested happen in this particular incident. I think that is important as well. Uh, but I, I heard when you said we're only having a pause button. Uh, and for those of us along the Atlantic, uh, we want to see much more than a pause button. Uh, we want to see uh, a, an effort that clearly uh, makes it clear that we're not looking to put multi-billion dollar, just New Jersey alone is a $50 billion coastal tourism industry. So uh, I, I hope that we understand that. Let me just ask two questions that I think are critically important. You know, uh, all the regulations in the world are good, but if they're not enforced, uh, it doesn't mean much. I know you know that as a former attorney general. Uh, the reality is, is that when I look at BP's response plan, it, it didn't take a rocket scientist to know they couldn't have been very serious because when they had sea otters, walruses, and seals as part of the uh, response that they would have to animals in the Gulf, uh, last time I looked, we don't have those animals in the Gulf. Uh, and obviously, uh, they didn't really have a plan to deal with the worst case scenario. And it's something we have to look going forward as to what, in fact, we uh, permit. I mean, I, I don't understand who reviewed that plan and saw those uh, elements in their plan and said, you can't be serious. <laughs> Maybe in the Arctic, but not in the Gulf of Mexico. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. So you really have to question who's reviewing these things. Secondly, uh, MMS, uh, a Houston Chronicle review of accidents investigated by MMS, found that of nearly 400 offshore safety investigations, MMS collected only 16 fines of 400 investigations. So uh, I know that you're reforming MMS. The question is, are we going to have the right regulatory oversight, a vigorous oversight, so that we don't relive this? including on response plans. And, and lastly, uh, are, we, uh, are we in challenge? There have been some reports that there is another drilling rig near the deep water horizon called the Ocean Saratoga that appears to be leaking with a 10 mile long slick visible from satellite images. It was only discovered because of the images of the deep water horizon. Do you have any information on whether that is in fact a spill that is occurring? And if so, what is being done uh, to stop it? Let me, uh, Senator Menendez, I appreciate your, uh, your comments, and uh, I know your uh, passion of views on these issues for a long time, and uh, let me assure you that um, they are taken into consideration. With respect to uh, the, the, uh, the, the other spill that you speak about, my understanding is that uh, it is a remnant leftover from uh, Hurricane Ivan, and that uh, it is leaking, uh, I guess, at approximately about a third of a barrel a day. So. Uh, but I can get we, we will get some additional information uh, for you on that with respect to your uh, can, can you can you get for the I guess the whole committee but certainly I'd like to know sure how long that's been going on sure. as well and, we and will, what is the attempt to close it down we will get we will get that information uh, to you uh, with respect to uh, the uh, invest the, the enforcement of regulations uh, it is precisely the reason why we are moving forward with the creation of a Bureau of uh, Safety and Environmental Enforcement. 
uh, it needs to have the kind of police power to make sure, and the personnel and the culture, uh, to make sure that uh, regulations are in fact uh, enforced. And so that's uh, part of the uh, reorganization and overhaul of MMS that uh, we are undertaking. Uh, the goal is one which uh, I very much uh, share with you, Senator Men Menendez, and that is that we must have uh, vigorous uh, and complete uh, enforcement uh, mechanisms in place uh, with respect to uh, any oil and gas uh, activities in the Outer Continental Shelf. Well, I'll close. My time is finished. But let me just say, you can't be coach and referee. And uh, MMS uh, has, as it was constituted before, been both an advocate for the industry and supposed to be uh, you know, the referee of making sure that safety and soundness and a whole host of other things were observed. That simply didn't happen. We, we had a police officer that was asleep at the switch. Uh, and if you look at the response plan and see that it doesn't make any sense, then alarm bells should have, uh, you know, mm -hmm. risen that, in fact, these people really are not prepared for the worst-case scenario. And I hope we learn from that <laughs> as we move forward. Thank you, Mr.